How's it going boys and girls, it's your boy Rough Diamond here. When first starting a game, I like to browse the settings menu to see all the available options and if there are any that better suit my style. For example, everyone is different and the default sensitivity setting may be too high for yourself but too low for somebody else and only you can work this out. I'm only going to cover the settings which I think are important but it's always worthwhile having a look for yourself as a setting that didn't really bother me might bother you. Also, it's good to check back every now and then as the devs might add extra settings down the line. Best controller setup and game settings. Starting off with gameplay. Interact prompt style. I like to keep on compact now. I am familiar with weapons and items. Plus it frees up space on your screen as it can get cluttered at times. But it might be a good idea when you are first starting out to help you learn about items, etc. Button hints. I also turn off to clear up space on my heads up display. It's useful if you don't know the buttons, but after a while you won't need these prompts. Crosshair damage feedback. I like to have on X and shield so I know when I'm getting a hit marker and I get an indicator when I damage the enemy's armor. Damage numbers. I keep on floating as I know what damage each bullet is doing. Setting it to both will give you a combined number as well, but this can be an information overload as well as more clutter. Ping indicator. I keep on default as I do struggle to see pinged items at times, but we'll move over to faded soon as pinged items, especially at a distance, can block your view. This setting here I can't actually pronounce, but I keep it on as it can give you some really useful information and something I like to keep Keep an eye on regularly as it can tell you a lot like weapons used, kill leaders, etc. Incoming damage feedback. Personal preference really, but I keep mine on 2D just because I feel like 3D would obstruct my view more than 2D would. Colorblind mode. I keep off, but can be useful not only if you are colorblind obviously, but to change the color of items and indicators. At times your player indicator on the map can be hard to see due to its color and this can help prevent that. Convert incoming voice to chat. You can convert in-game chat to text which displays on your screen, but I'll be honest, it isn't that intuitive and most of the time it's complete nonsense. One thing to be aware of though, if this is set to on, you won't be able to hear your teammates. Next controller. Out of all the settings, this page has the most impact in my opinion. Button layout I keep on default as that is what I'm used to and is like most other games I play. Plus I have an elite controller which has extra programmable paddles on the back which are my jump and crouch buttons meaning my fingers hardly leave the buttons. You can change this setting if you find one that better suits you. Try bumper jumper as it swaps around the jump and tactical ability buttons so you don't have to take your fingers off the analog sticks to jump. Stick layout I also keep on default because that's what I'm used to. There are some advanced movement settings here you can play with if you want. Interact reload button. You may have experienced an issue when you've gone to reload but instead you've interacted with an item. This setting is to prevent that. I keep mine on tap to use and reload as it doesn't really bother me. Crouch is set to toggle and aim is set to hold. There are games out there where having aim set to toggle works in your favour but I can't really see any advantages in Apex. Sensitivity. I know a lot of people go straight in with a high sensitivity, but this is too much for me. I start low with the intention of creasing it over time. And the same goes for ADS sensitivity. It's true the higher the sensitivity, the quicker you can move and aim. But if you find yourself under or over aiming, adjust accordingly. Response curve. Having it set to classic, steady or linear are the best in my opinion, depending on your controller and skill. It's how your view turns with the input from the analog stick. But it's basically the speed and acceleration in basic form your character turns when you move the analog stick from the dead zone to the furthest tilt point. The dead zone is the movement you get on your sticks, but the character in-game doesn't actually move, and the tilt point is what angle your sticks are at. Classic is very similar to Call of Duty and what you might be used to. Steady is good for small adjustments, like for when you are aiming at long distance, but it can feel sluggish. Fine aim is very slow when you first start to move and remains slow, but quickly picks up at the furthest tilt point. High velocity is what it reads. As soon as the sticks leave the dead zone, there's a lot of speed and can be hard to control. Quite similar to PC, but makes things like small adjustments very difficult. And as it reads, linear is a raw input and doesn't have a curve. Starts slow and increases steadily as the stick tilts further. And if you have custom settings already for your elite controller, it's best to use linear. Look and movement dead zone. The the dead zone is the movement you have on your sticks but the character doesn't actually move in game. This can be increased if you find your character drifting when you're not touching the sticks. This can also depend on your controller but the smaller a dead zone allows for better aim control. I have vibration off for a couple of reasons. One because I think it's a bit of a distraction and two it simply saves battery on my controller. Next video. Brightness depends on your TV and personal preference really. Apex is quite a bright game and doesn't really have any dark areas so no need to have it too high. You can increase your field of view meaning you can see more of your surroundings but it can make your screen have a fisheye effect and enemies at distance are harder to spot. The default is 70 and mine is set to 80 and after adjusting it for the first time it took some getting used to as I was under aiming but after a couple of games I got used to it. I am planning to up it with time. And finally audio. All my volume levels are up apart from the in-game music and the lobby music. I feel it's a distraction in-game and simply just bugs me in the menus. Subtitles I like to have on, but in Apex they cover too much of the screen so I turn them off. Having them on though is useful to gain information you may have missed but can impede your view. 
Right, that's it for this video. Some useful information in there and helped me understand some of the settings better. Like if you like, comment and sub. Hit the little bell for notifications. I've been Rough Diamond. Catch you another video soon. Laters.